Hey everybody, it's the um, movie wrap up for November. Like I mentioned in my other video, I didn't actually um, watch this, you know, much this month. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Oh, eight of my own movies and four of I borrowed. So, oh, I watched Haunter. Trapped by an evil from her past. Abigail Breslin starred in Haunter, a unique take on the traditional haunted house story from director Vincenzo Natali. In 1986, teenager Lisa and her family died in their home under sinister circumstances. Unable to move on, their spirits continued to roam the house during the inter intervening years. Now over a period of six days, Lisa must reach out from beyond the grave to help her living counterpart Olivia avoid the same fate that Lisa and her family suffered long ago. Uniquely unsettling and shocking, Haunter is a one-of-a-kind reverse ghost story that chills long after the final frame. Commentary, two different commentaries behind the scenes. Haunter, the complete storyboards by the director and trailer. That's the reason I didn't want to show them to you. Just a little bit of them. Then I watched Flyway Home. Oh wait, when was that made? Sorry. 2013. This was made in 1992. The soaring adventures of a 13 year old girl and her estranged father who learn that family is all learn what family is all about when they adopt an orphan dog orphaned flock of geese and teach them to fly. I'm trying to figure out here because there's other stuff in the back too. Uh, two different commentaries. The HBO special. Exclusive feature it. Some feature it. Documentary trailers, filmographies, and, and that's it. I'm trying to figure it out because there's like so many other weird things and stuff like that. Uh, this was made in 2013. Academy Award winner Jennifer Lawrence returns as Katniss Everdeen in this thrilling second adventure from the tri from the Twilight. <laughs> Sorry. No, I was gonna try. I was about to say Twilight and Hunger Games at the same time. From the Hunger Games sagas, against all odds, Katniss and fellow tribute Peeta have returned home after. Surviving the Hunger Games. Winning means they must leave loved ones behind and embark on a victory tour through the districts. Along the way, Katniss senses a rebellion simmering, one that she and Peeta may have sparked. At the end of the tour, President Snow announces a deadly 75th Hunger Games that could change Pan Am forever. Commentary, deleted scenes, and divergent sneak peek. That's actually what made me want to get the book Divergent because I saw the trailer. Um, the Conjuring, that's the one Crystal gave me. 2013 again. Based on true events, The Conjuring tells the thrilling story of a ghost hunters, Lorraine and Ed Warren, who help a family terrorized by an evil spirit in their mysterious farmhouse. The Conjuring face to face with terror. Relive the real life horror as the Perone family comes together to reflect back on the farmhouse they shared with diabolical spirits for nearly a decade. A life in demonology. The real demonologist and paranormal experts from the Conjuring take you inside their life's work and into their personal occult cellar. Where they keep, I think this is on the Blu-ray part, where they keep haunted and unholy relics from their many cases. Yeah, because I ain't got a Blu-ray player. 
think it's freaking on the second disc. I'm gonna go with this one for first. Because if I'm on the second, that's not even on the first the DVD thing. It ain't on that. Scaring the blank out of you. Director James Wan comes, welcomes you into his world and gives you an inside look at the secret that scares a blank out of movie goer time and time again. See, let's see if I can show you. You see, it's like a bunch of little letters and stuff. That's the reason I said blank. <laughs> Based on the true case files of the Warrens, I do want to get, um, I think there's another one out, or coming out, I'm not sure yet, that, um, I actually am going to get it, and I'm actually going to pop this into the laptop just to make sure the special features are on the DVD part too. I hope so, because I actually want to watch it. I am going to try my hardest to get a Blu-ray player. Hopefully if somebody's selling it cheap, then I can just get it that way. <sighs> then I'm going- then I watched- I'm going to watch- I watched Twilight. That's also what made me say Twilight when I was reading that. Made in 2008. Bella Swan doesn't expect much when she moves to the small town of Forks, Washington until she meets the mysterious and handsome Edward Cullen. A boy who's hiding a dark secret. He's a vampire. As their world, worlds and hearts collide, Edward must battle the bloodlust raging inside him, as well as a catery of the undead that would make Bella their prey. Based on the first New York, based on the number one New York Times best-selling sensation by Stephanie Meyer, Twilight has a dangerous twist to the classic story of star-crossed lovers. Extended scenes, commentary, music video. Then watched Halloween 4. Mm, made in 1987, I think. Ten years ago, he's changed the face of Halloween. Tonight, he's back. Oh, yeah, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. I keep forgetting the, the bottom section there. Yeah, this one's supposedly remastered. The remastered edition kind of thing. Special DV Max series edition. Um, a decade ago, he butchered 16 people trying to get his, get to his sister. He was shot and incinerated, but still the entity that Dr. Loomis calls evil on two legs would not die. Tonight, Michael Myers has come home again to kill. This time, Michael Myers returns to Hattonfield for Jamie Lloyd. The orphaned daughter of Lori Strode and her babysitter Rachel, which is really her sort of like adopted sister, can Loomis stop Michael before the unholy slaughter reaches his innocent young niece? Mm -hmm. I hate saying people's names because some of them, sometimes I say them wrong. Michael Pat Pat Take Pat Take I can't pronounce the last name. Sasha Jensen and. Kathleen Kinmont, co-star in this smash sequel that marked the long-awaited return to the original storyline and remains infamous for its startling twist ending and graphic violence. Pateki? Pateki? Sorry, I'm just trying to figure... Where's that Michelle? I don't know now. Michael? I can't remember who characters and stuff. Why is it all white? Why is it that's bright? I'll just deal with it right now. Um, because I'm not going to do this all over again. Let's see. Commentary. Two different commentaries. Halloween 4 and 5 discussion panel. The making of Halloween 4. Final cut. And trailer. Then watched Ruthless, Ruthless People. Um, I don't think this is going to tell me when it was made. Let's 
No, it's not telling me. In this fiendishly funny comedy from the creators of Airplane, loathsome millionaire Sam Stone is ruthless. How ruthless when his shrill wife Barbara is nabbed by inept kidnappers. Sam cries tears of joy and refuses to pay the ransom. And when the abductors threaten to kill the abrasive hair heiress, Sam takes immediate action. He celebrates. Ruthless people, raucous, outlandish, one of the top box office hits of the year. And there's no special features. Yeah, they actually become friends with. And they plot against. It's funny. Like, uh, the last one of my movies. Halloween 5. The Revenge of Michael Myers. Michael lives, and this time they're ready. 1989. Because hell. Oh, wait. Sorry. Michael lives, and this time they're ready. Again, it's the same special edition type thing. Because hell would not have him. Michael Myers survived the mine explosion thought to have killed him. One year later, he his traumatized young niece, Jamie, is horrified to discover. She has a telepathic bond with her evil uncle, and that Uncle Michael is on his way back to Haddonfield, but Dr. Loomis has a new plan to destroy the boogeyman in his childhood home using Jamie as bait. Tonight, the carnage begins again. Michael Myers is back with a vengeance. Just a second, okay? Hmm. Is the guy that played in this is Michael the same guy on this one? Because I can't remember now. Because it said. No, it might be. Um. Never mind. I'm thinking because it says. Um, Ellie Cornell and. Can't even pronounce that. Bu Star. Return. See, I don't remember who that is. I'm I'm bad with put names with faces and stuff. I think I might be that dumb. Officer or something, because I'm trying to remember what I've heard on that special features. I like part one better than part two. But could somebody tell me something on part, well, part four, I'll call it part one and two, but part four and five? Um... I like part four better than five. But could somebody tell me about something? Part part five. Um, what's her name? Tina. Does she die because she? Yeah, she got stabbed like right in like in the shoulder. But she was still alive. She was crying out, "Run!" And it was like what a minute later. The police is there. Sure, she's on a stretcher, but they didn't. You know how normally they cover them up if they're dead. Well, she wasn't covered up. Sure, she was like unconscious or something, but nobody ever explained that if she was dead or not. Did somebody tell me if she was dead, because I always thought she was like unconscious or something. That was the last one of mine. Oh. Special features. <laughs> Commentary, introduction. It's an introduction that uh, Daniel Harris and Ellie Cornell did. On set, Halloween 5 footage. Inside, Halloween 5. And trailer. I know normally I show you, but where I got less, I'm just going to go tell you myself. This is one that I borrowed from Crystal. Spliced. Cut to your worst nightmare. If Crystal doesn't want this, I'd actually take it. This is actually mine to begin with. And I traded Crystal something for this with something else, and she took it. Oh, if you're noise in the background, ignore it, because I'm just watching Harem scare him.
This was made in 2002. Mary's an attractive high school senior who's obsessed with horror flicks. After she sees the latest horror hit the wisher, deadly consequences begin to unfold. Someone or something is granting Mary's wishes in the most violent and perverted ways. High school just became a living hell. The ring meets Nightmare on the Street. And if I'm... Well, no, yeah. Uh, special features, deleted scenes, and commentary. It's actually a pretty good movie. I then watch Poltergeist remake. What are you afraid of? It's made in 2015. After the Bowen family move into a seemingly perfect suburban home, sinister spirits begin to haunt them. And when the terrifying apparitions of Duff Maddie, their youngest daughter, the Bowens, must find a way to rescue her, or they'll lose her forever with suspenseful storytelling and jaw-dropping visuals, this electrifying take on a spine-chilling spine classic will haunt you from its early nightmarish moments to its exhilarating climax. Alternate ending in the still gallery. I don't get this. I mean, I like it, but it's the ending I don't get. I don't get, is the, is that dude trapped in the other side, or did he get his way out? Because that little blinky red dot thing that he had on him, it's pop. It, first it disappeared when he went into the portal thing. And it's saying, oh, come on, where is he? Where is he? Did he make it out? Blink, blink, blink. It finally started blinking. So I don't get it. Is he alive or is he stuck? I then watched. Actually, I'm gonna get this movie. I actually really like it. An American Werewolf in Paris. Things are about to get a little hairy. Made. I'm hoping it'll tell me. I bet you it will not. Nope. But I'm thinking somewhere in the 90s. This hip, edgy thriller in the electrifying tradition of Scream, Scream 2 from Dusk Till Dawn delivers a howling good time with a hot young cast of stars. On the loose in Europe, three wild college grads bring their devil, daredevil tour to Paris in search of some of some serious fun. There, Andy falls for the beautiful and mysterious woman of his dreams. The only problem is when the moon is full, Andy's dream girl turns into a total nightmare. Rocking with a cool soundtrack featuring today's hottest cutting-edge recording artists, an American Werewolf from Paris is an outrageously thrilling adventure you don't want to miss. Trailer, and that's it. And special features. Then I watched the Ultimate Ernest Collection. Ernest in the Army. Hey Vern, it's Ernest. Oh, hey Vern, it's Ernest. Sorry. Hey Vern, it's my family album. Ernest goes to Africa. Your world as I see it. Ernest Greatest Hits, or Ernest Greatest Hits, uh, two, one and two. Oh, you must believe me. I am telling the truth. I am telling the truth. Almighty Lord of the Assassin. King Torrenshaw, well played by the Americans. He's not the brightest bulb or the sharpest tool, and he won't, won't stop talking from one crazy mishap to the next. It's Ernest P. Whirl, Whirl, everybody's favorite motor mouth nader in this greatest collection of his famously far out hijinks together in one piece. Place. Sorry. Get ready for wall to wall after as Ernest stumbles through the army, the jungles of Africa, a basketball team, his early commercials, and many, many more hilarious misadventures. Ernest in the Army, 
our old bunny Ernest P. Worrell loves being our loves big army trucks, so he enlists in the reserves to get a chance to drive them. Unfortunately, Ernest's unit is called up to serve overseas as part of a force looking to stop a Middle Eastern dictator. Ernest goes to Africa. Ernest must head to Africa to save the girl of his dreams from a group of diamond smugglers. After giving her an unsuspecting yo-yo of priceless diamonds he stumbled upon. Hey Vern, it's my family album. Ernest, while cleaning his dusty attic, comes across his old family album. His recollections come to life in a series of skits starring Jim Bar Barney impersonating his most eccentric ancestors. Your world as I see it, Ernest and his unique family give he us numerous views of life from the shallow end of the gene pool. Forty stories, hundreds of laughs, but just one earnest. Greatest hits. Uh, one, see Ernest in some of his best moments from several of his famous commercials and public service announcements. You'll also be treated to his wackiest bloopers and outtakes. Ernest's Greatest Hits 2. Ernest is back with more great moments in commercials, bloopers, behind the scenes looks, and special surprises. Out of all of these, my favorite one would be maybe Ernest, Ernest in the Army. That one's my favorite. Oh, it's kind of like a tie though. Ernest in the Army and Ernest Goes to Africa. That's my favorite. Yeah, I can give them back to everybody. Well, that I actually bought some books today, but um, my family wanted to wrap them up, so to make for Christmas. I can't even remember what I got. I mostly got some things for everybody else. I think I only got me like two, yeah, two books. Can't remember what they were. So, we'll see you later. Bye. If I get anything, ooh, if I get anything, I'll show you. Or if I, uh, you know. I think my next video would probably be Christmas. Some things I get for Christmas, this can probably be my next video. Maybe. Unless I order something. No, I can't. My family is wanting me, if I order anything next month, it's going to be a Christmas gift. And so you won't be able to see it until Christmas. So yeah, I think my next video is just going to be Christmas. Things I get for Christmas. Bye.